This is the ICP chart. It's been going down a lot lately, and many people are wondering, is ICP still a good investment? Now, I've heard predictions of anywhere from a $50 ICP to a $1,000 ICP. So what I want to do today is look at ICP from my perspective and show you how I would analyze a chart like this in a raw format. There, I haven't looked at this chart yet. I know a lot of the fundamentals behind what ICP is doing, but I want to look at what ICP is doing and figure out if today, if you believe in ICP, if today is a good buying price or if you should look at buying it or what can we expect from the chart. So this is going to be a master class on how I really do technical analysis and it's part of the two steps that I do to analyze projects. I analyze them. I look at the fundamentals of what's going on with the project. So for ICP, I know a lot about what ICP is. I know what it's trying to do and I know what its goals are. I've made a couple other videos, three or four videos about ICP and kind of what's going on there. So if you don't know about ICP before looking at the chart, you should go learn about it. Learn about the staking, learn about the governance, learn about the NNS, learn about what it's trying to do with the decentralized internet, right? And how subnets work and how staking works and how you can lock for eight years and the inflation, deflation mechanisms, all that stuff you need to know about before jumping into the chart in, in my perspective, right? Because the chart's going to show us about half of the information, but you still need a good underlying asset, all right? So we're going to skip that part because I already know a lot about ICP and I'm assuming a lot of you watching already know a lot about it too. Let's jump into the chart and just see what is going on here. So this is obviously the very zoomed out version and there's a lot of you know theories as to why this big drop happened. So we're going to skip all that. Really, in a, in a today's version of technical analysis here in 2024, I don't even care about this giant dip. I want to know what is going on today. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in and I'm looking at a weekly chart here. I do all of my trading, all of, I, can, I call it long-term swing trading. I do it on weekly, monthly, and sometimes three-day time frames. I want to go as far out as possible as I can. This clears up 90% of the picture and it helps you avoid like those day-to-day -day emotions, the day-to-day -day candles, the day-to-day -day wicks. What do all those even mean, right? When you're on a chart that has months and weeks and years of data, what does one single day mean? So we're on a weekly chart here, ICP USD, ICP versus the dollar, right? That's what we're looking at here. And uh, yeah, let's just see what this chart has going for it. So initially, you're going to see a couple things on my chart here that I like to use. We have right here the, this is a, a moving average ribbon. It has 200, 500, 120 moving averages, whether you're looking at weekly, it's a weekly moving averages, whether you're, whether you're looking at a daily chart, it's a daily moving average, but it's a 20, 50, 100, and 200, in this case, weekly moving average. And the ribbon, I like using the ribbon because I use a free trading view account. So it puts basically four moving averages on my screen for the you know price of one. In, in trading view, you can only have two free indicators on the chart at a time. So I like the ribbon because it predefines all these things for me. The other thing you're going to notice that is I have the MACD on here. There's two other indicators I'm going to use. That's the MACD and the RSI. And I think those are great for trend reversal indication. So when you're trying to figure out where kind of a local bottom is or where kind of a, a good spot to buy is, you need a convergence of evidence. And I like to use RSI, I like to use MACD, I like to use moving average, I like to use Fibonacci retracement, and then I like to draw my own support and resistance level. So when you kind of have a convergence of all of those three or four things, then you can have a better case scenario, a better perspective and a better reasoning to say, hey, this is a good spot to buy. Even if it goes lower, I can keep buying more. But the odds are, based on the support and resistance of all these indicators, we have a good spot to buy here. So we're going to use the MACD here, and then we're also going to use the RSI. The first thing that I initially notice on this chart is that we have a great little pullback here. This move right here is perfect for a Fibonacci retracement. We can see that this moving average right here is our 100-week simple moving average, and ICP is just hovering right above that 100 week simple moving average. There's not a lot of data here. We can't go back and see in previous markets what the 100 would have done if it would have held support throughout the full bull market. But the 100 week simple moving average seems like a pretty decent spot to hold support just based on other cryptos I've looked at. And you know, the 100 week is something that's pretty hard to break. So right now ICP is holding it as support. That's a good sign. Let's check out what this Fibonacci retracement is gonna show us here. And what you wanna do with the Fibonacci retracement is basically find the swing low point of this move. It's kinda, of, you could say maybe like right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you wanna to move to the swing high move. You can go up here and do it, or you can kinda of take the average and put it like right here. I personally think that's a better, a better spot to place it in this current scenario because you can have one 
wick that just goes crazy off the chart, right? But when you have that second wick, that kind of definitely locates a high point. So I'm gonna put it there. You can do whatever you want. It's not gonna change the chart a whole lot. But when we look at this, we can see, okay, based on the swing low, maybe, you know, like right here, to the swing high, we can see that ICP is currently hovering in that 786 to 618 area. Typically, these two areas, the 786, 618, is a very high probability chance of retracement before a further upwards move. You can look at other scenarios where other cryptos have done this move, or they even, like Bitcoin last cycle, would come up and then retrace down to the 0.382 Fibonacci. So the 786 to the 618 is a great spot to retrace to. And this makes me feel even more confident that we have a convergence here of kind of this 100 week simple moving average and the 786 level that typically, you know, if you want to hold a bullish support, your, your, your crypto would maintain here or above it on its way for a further upwards swing. A big problem occurs if ICP dips below this 786 for more than like two weeks at a time. It can dip below and then the next week dip right back up so it doesn't confirm a close below. But if you have two consecutive weeks confirming a close below the 786, then you can really run into trouble because ICP has no support below that. It ha its only support is the next level down here at about two and a half to three dollars. So nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants ICP going at two, two and a half to three dollars. But right now what we're seeing with this Fibonacci is a great little 786 to 618 retracement. You can look it up. It's a common retracement pattern. And the range here is between six, $6 and 30 cents to nine dollars. So that's the range that ICP has been playing in for the past month, basically. But what I like to see is I like to see a common retracement down to this level converging with a 100 week simple moving average. It could have been the 50 week simple moving average. It's the 100 week simple moving average. Any moving average that is converging here is a good sign. The third piece of evidence that we have that this chart is kind of in its trend reversal or is getting very close to its trend reversal on the weekly time frame is this MACD right here. Typically, if you go back and you can look at the history of ICP on the MACD, which we can do here in a second, but when you have the MACD, especially on a weekly chart and a monthly chart, it's going to have a much higher level of indicating what the overall trend is because the MACD is moving so much slower than like a daily chart or a 30 minute chart or an hour chart, right? When you're using these longer time frames, simpler indicators work because it's a broader, larger time frame where this is a weekly chart, a weekly MACD. You can have an up day, a down day, an up day, and a down day. And this chart doesn't even recognize all those emotions that are going into play. This chart is showing that ICP is in the process of reversing the MACD back to green, which you want to do in order to be in a bullish upwards trend. You can see back when it flipped green right here, look at this giant move ICP made. And now we're in red retracing down. But the fact that we have a MACD going from red to light red, which hopefully will lead to green, this kind of indicating a reversal over the next week or two upcoming weeks, this MACD combined with this Fibonacci retracement and this moving average are all converging signs that we have a lot of support for a trend reversal. If I just zoom out here on the ICP chart, you can see how this MACD has been working. Obviously, ICP was in you know a big downtrend in the bear market. So these, I, these MACD movements upwards are always going to be kind of met with downward price action. But the lens that I'm viewing this through today is that we are in the crypto bull market. We are in the 2025, 2024, 2025 bull market. Bitcoin's been in a bull market. A lot of altcoins have been in a bull market and have been retracing recently. But I'm viewing this today in 2024, July of 2024, from a bullish lens because that is what has always happened. Crypto over the four-year cycle has been bullish after the halving. And that's the lens that we have to take because that is traditionally what has happened and that cycle has not been broken yet. So viewing this from a bullish standpoint, we, we have a reversal in trend here from green to red back to green is what it's trying to work towards with this lighter red candle. Whereas back here, we're in a bear market here in 2022, 2023. So green is basically relief from that bearish trend, which you can see here, we, we go up in price, we go up in green, and then we come back down and back up and back down. And ICP is slowly making its bottom. Today, the, the, the situation is a little bit different because ICP has bottomed off of all that downward sell pressure, making its way back up and has made its way above moving averages. So I would like to see this MACD as a trend reversal indicator. After looking at the MACD, the next thing I would do is TradingView only allows me two free indicators. So I got to go toss on the RSI here. 
I would toss on the RSI to see if that is confirming the same thing as my MACD. And so what I'll do actually is I'll remove this moving average, toss on the MACD and the RSI together so we can take a look at it. But what we're seeing here on the RSI is kind of the same story. It's a good story. It's a story that I want to see if I am an ICP investor. For full transparency, I don't hold any ICP. I've just done a lot of research on it. So I want to give a price analysis on it. But what this RSI is telling you is that we are slowly, ICP is slowly moving into oversold territory. What you will probably see, what I imagine will happen after, you know, being in crypto for a little bit is that this MACD is going to slowly move more and more light red over the next month. This RSI is probably going to bounce back up to this moving average and maybe come lower. You'll probably want it to go lower to be more oversold. While all that's happening, I think price could probably just sit right here on the 786 uh, Fibonacci and maybe come up a little, maybe come down a little. But the accumulation of ICP price within this 786 to 618 territory here is going to push the RSI into oversold because you know when you get into an accumulation phase not a lot of price actions going upwards not a lot of price actions going downwards people will sell their position and it will kind of just make the RSI trickle lower and lower and lower this is what this is looking to happen but the good thing about this is that ICP got overbought it went overbought and as it was you know cooling back off people were still buying what you are seeing here is a, a great indicator of ICP bottoming out. And in order to have a great trend reversal, you want the MACD to be red, turning light red. You want to have the RSI oversold, as in it's a good risk-free time to buy, right? And then you want to have moving averages and Fibonacci's to support that. What you are seeing here is a convergence of all four things. I think the, the RSI can definitely move a little bit lower here. I'd like to see it get down into the 30 range or you know 35 range or maybe even 25 range to get really oversold. But the fact that this RSI is moving oversold, the MACD is flipping over to green. It's going to take a couple of weeks for this, this MACD to get green, right? It's going to take maybe a month or, or a month and a half, maybe two months at the, at the latest. In that time, you'll see the RSI continue to bottom and you'll see price probably accumulate in this channel. That is what I'm looking for to indicate a good buying time. So basically I've assessed that, you know, out of all the times to buy ICP, now is probably one of the better times to do it. If you thought ICP was a good buy here at $19, $15, if you were buying a lot at $13, now is a better time to buy than that. So on your risk reward level, ICP is a better time to buy now than it was just a couple months ago. The problem is a lot of people are going to be scared because of the current price at about $6 is a, a little scary. They're like, is the bull market really going to come back? Is ICP going to do well? People want to buy when things are good. The whole goal of this channel is to buy when things are bad. So this is a great time for kind of an accumulation of ICP at what is considered a good risk to reward scenario. My logic with all of these indicators is that if ICP were to break further downward, there's not a whole lot of more downwards pressure to go. I mean, it's going to be hard for ICP to break below like $2 and $3. There's not... I said that there's not a lot of support here, which there isn't, but at some point there's diminishing returns. Like when you're down 80%, down 90%, down 95%, it's harder and harder to continue to go down 98% and 99%. So the odds are in your favor to buy kind of in these lower areas around the 786 when you have MACDs and RSIs and moving averages kind of pushing your trend in the opposite way over the coming month or two. This is kind of what I think. This is how I analyze charts. This is how I find good long-term swing trading opportunities. So if you're interested in holding ICP for weeks and months and years, now is a good time to buy, if any. They're, the only better time to buy was probably down here at $2, but we saw that $2. We saw ICP go back to $20. So $6 right now, if you believe in the product, is actually a steal, all right? So that's what I'm looking at. Now, the next thing I want to look at is, can ICP hit $50? And the question is really... Well, the answer is I really don't know. But the way that I would analyze that is you can go the traditional route. There's two routes to analyze a crypto like this. The first route is to compare it to something else that you think it is similar to. So some people think ICP should be the same size as Solana. You can compare market caps and get a price that way. 
What I'm going to do, since I don't really know how high ICP goes, I'm not an ICP investor, and I don't know like all the theories people have of where they're pulling $50 or $1,000 from, is I'm going to use a trend-based Fibonacci retracement or extension, a trend-based Fibonacci extension. In order to do that, you're going to go right here. You're going to click the arrow, and you have Fib retracement, and then a trend-based Fibonacci extension. You can click that. You can click your swing low that we just had here. This is kind of that $2 area. Then you can come up here and click that same swing high around the $19 area. And then you just want to bring this down to your current swing low, which for ICP looks to be about like right at $5.80. So what this is going to do is it's going to kind of set up that same Fibonacci that we had. But this is from an extension standpoint, not a retracement standpoint. After you set this up, you can then just kind of squash your chart here and you can really see what people are analyzing as good price targets. Now, when I see this, this does make me think $50 could be in the cards for ICP. And that's because what you should do, what I recommend you do is do this extension and then look at the current Fibonacci charts or the current Fibonacci levels that this kind of indicator assesses as good selling points. So this indicator, you know, if I didn't know anything about ICP and I just wanted to buy in at the current price and I wanted to set a price, a target to sell in the bull market, I could set a price at $32, $48, and uh, right here, $65. Now, the reason I say that $50 could be in the cards is that when you do this same analysis on Ethereum and its bull markets, right, at the bull market peak, if you go to the peak before it, and then do the trend-based FIB extension, Ethereum was getting into these 2.618 and possibly even higher extension levels in the 2021 bull market. So what I would do is go and compare this trend-based Fibonacci extension to other cryptos that you like, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano. What did the other cryptos do in previous bull markets? How far extended did they get? And how far do you think ICP can get extended in that same manner? I've seen some theories about $1,000 ICP I don't really think that's possible, but this right here, $50, $48 at the 2618, that makes me think that that could be potentially possible based on just this trend-based Fibonacci extension. Ethereum was pushing last cycle in 2021 in and around this area for its max capitulation extension. So there's not a lot of reason why you think ICP wouldn't be able to do the same unless you have a, a different belief about the underlying fundamentals. And this goes same true for all cryptos. This is how I get Cardano predictions. You know, Cardano currently, the 1618 is about $5. That's why I think Cardano can go to $5. Um, this, the 2618 on Cardano is about 7 to $8. And then higher up here, it's about $11. So that's where people are getting price predictions when you use trading metrics like this. The last thing that I would say about ICP is if you wanna get an even further zoomed out view of what is going on here, you can go to the monthly chart here on the ICP USD chart. This has all the same indicators that I've already shown you. We have our Fibonacci retracement, we have our MACD and we have our RSI. ICP is still looking bullish when you zoom out to the monthly chart, which shows an overall kind of really good trend to the upside or a good possibility compared to what the traditional indicators say. Um, I know this MACD is going from light green to, gr to dark green and now back to light green again. But the good thing about what is being shown here is that the blue line is still above the orange line. You get green on the MACD when the blue is above the orange. And this does not look like it's going to make a very sharp downturn to go below the orange line. What you want here what you would really hope for here is that the blue line and the orange line would converge before ICP makes that next step to the upwards, pushing this MACD back into a green trajectory. Obviously, that's a lot of speculation, but it feels like it could happen because of what we see on this RSI as well. The RSI currently is coming out of red. That massive bear market ICP had was a ton of red on the chart, and it is moving upwards in fashion. I, or the RSI is also maintaining above the the RSI moving average, which is a good sign. This yellow line is the RSI moving average, and you want that purple RSI line to maintain above the RSI moving average in yellow in order to maintain the upwards trend, okay? So monthly charts really help you to zoom things out. If I wanted to draw support lines, I would come to this monthly chart and kind of zoom out way over here and draw some lines this way. We can do that in another video, but this is what I'm seeing on ICP. I can... 
I'm not a holder of ICP. I've talked about the fundamentals in other videos and I like different types of fundamentals. But if you want to buy into ICP, now is probably one of the better times for you to do so, especially if you want to buy and sell in a swing trade format this cycle and sell sometime in late 2025. All right. That's what I think about the ICP price. I do think $50 could be in the cards for ICP this cycle. I do not think $1,000 is possible or $200 is possible, but $50 ICP, I think could be possible if you want to buy in here today. That's all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found some value in how I swing trade these assets. If you like the video, if you have any questions or have any comments about how I analyze these charts, drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to tell you more or talk about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.